right, this is DJ Wiggs, Apocalypse Radio, taking you through said apocalypse. Uh, today's date is the 16th, September, the year's 223, none of that's true. And uh, we're going to be going over some revelation type stuff and ancient predictions that doesn't matter which religion or whatever it doesn't matter like of things playing out and is it the owner's manual and something just happened in the skies and the cancellation Virgo that we're going to go over and I hope you understand what I'm talking about stay tuned get your coffee ready and all that and uh, let's talk about <laughs> the biblical end times that just happens to be like either being mimicked or really happening and <laughs> it's crazy see how that work i'm also going to show you the sun with a couple <laughs> it's got like two light sources and a ball of gas at the four o'clock position i'll show you the radar let's just do apocalypse radio <laughs> to kick this episode one podcast so this will be episode one the official first podcast for apocalypse radio we're gonna go hard with the apocalypse. Like I said, I'll keep it fun. And I'm going to start with a meteor in a second. That changes directions. I get angels and demons gathered. So, again, get your wine, coffee, whatever your uh, your naughty pleasure is. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Did that work? Naughty, naughty, naughty. I dig it. This is DJ Wiggs. Stay tuned. Alright, we're over here looking at a meteor which is tons of them in the news lately. Let's see what this thing does. Watch closely. And I'm leaving this in view so you can see that it's not being edited as far as I can tell. Going down. Oh, no, let's make a U-turn. <laughs> Hang on, wait. Oh, I'm too zoomed in. Hang on, you gotta see it like this. There we go. There you go. Sorry. I'm looking at two monitors right now. See how it makes a zigzag? You see how that works? So, like, in this book we're just talking about, it'll say uh, something like... Looks like a little light to the right of it, too. It'll say something about, like, don't look up. <laughs> There's a light right there. Is that a plane? It could be a plane nearby. How interesting. Anyways, that's how we'll start today up. Hopefully you got your uh, drink in hand. Here's a toast to what we want. I'm tapping my table. It's a bunch of coffee still. It's only 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I can't drink yet. All right, let's get on to the Virgo Bible prophecy. I think it's Revelation 12, 2, I believe. But let me let me ask my friend Chad. I mean Chad. Chad GPT. Uh, we do some really deep conversation so listen let's see what me and chad had to say all right we're over here at my uh friend chad uh my bff ai bff besides now i'm hanging out with bada bing so bada bing's got live internet access wait till you hear those clips but i asked chad it says what is the biblical end time sign that involves virgo giving birth that was my question right there at the top that's what the A is for Alpha Omega. And here's what Chad says. The biblical end times sign involving Virgo giving birth is based on an interpolation of Revelation 12, 1-2. Sorry, I said the wrong number, too, I think. It Anyways, it says here, A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant. And cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. And then it goes into what this could mean. Like, because nobody ever thought this would really happen. Because there's no star that would come out of her stomach. Alright, let me get you a little. I asked Chad then. No, I actually went to Bada Bing. I asked Bada Bing. I says, draw me a picture of this situation. Here's what Bada Bing did for me when I was. At these two now. They don't know each other. But I, I have them talk to each other through me. See how that worked? Let's see what Bada Bing came up with for my picture of this. So if you look here, this is AI generated for me. 
The sun is at her head. There's 12 stars. There's 11 and then the 12th. You could look more into it. But my point is, it's got the sun above, the moon's below. This is Venus, the constellation. And then this is, I says, draw it with a doohickey coming out of her stomach. You know, the area where they give birth. And then, bada bing, bada boom, there it is. This is Bing's version of what I was thinking out loud. Stand by. So, I make a meme story here on my Facebook, one of my news feeds. And here I have my AI drawing. And then here's a chart of the sky right now. And you got, I think that's Leo or something. And then what happens is September 17th. We enter, see this little head right here on the right? I don't know if it's showing up on the screen. Look at September 17th on the right there. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Here we go. September 17th is this little star. See how that works? There's a, a, a newly found asteroid. It's an asteroid. And I'll show you in a second the name. And it's just entering her head on the 17th. That's tomorrow. Today's the 16th. I think I said that in the beginning. So starting tomorrow, officially biblical prophecy, which I don't know how they could have guessed this, because this star that's coming, this asteroid that's literally going to be doing, see right now it'd be by her head. It's going to literally go through her body and come out the birthing canal. I'm not a doctor. Don't yell at me. And then, a few days after, I think by the 23rd, I don't have it on this chart. Is it on there? Hang on. Hang on. How far do I go? All the way to the 21st. The 21st, it'll be about the middle of her chest. So, I think the 23rd is what I calculated. The 23rd, it'll be coming, being born, let's call it, to be uh, non-doctoral. And let me show you why. This is weird. I'm over here at CB or is that it? I don't have my glasses on. CBC.ca's news site. CBC.ca Science Division. Quote New Comet makes historically close approach to Earth today. This is a couple days ago. But spotting it will take some luck. I don't think you need to spot it because we already got it on the charts. It's called Comet Nishimura, Nishimura Mura, discovered last month, will be competing with the sun as it rises and sets. And there's a little shot of how it's coming down. And picture right now, Ram Circa, this is the beginning of Virgo right here. Her head, the virgin's head is right here. And the baby comes out about here as this thing keeps going that way towards the sun. <laughs> And after a close approach to the Earth, I forgot to mention that, or did I just mention that? See how that worked? Stand by. So I'll go into concluding here what this means, because you're probably like, why does this even matter? Well, let's first see what the biblical scholars said if this situation were to happen. It says, many biblical scholars and enthusiasts have interpreted the passage allegorically over the years in recent times, there have been speculation linking this passage with the astrological events involving the constellation Virgo. The idea, this, the idea is that the woman described in Revelation represents the constellation Virgo, quote, clothed with the sun when the sun is passing through the constellation, quote, with the moon under her feet, with the moon is positioned just below the constellation. And the crown of 12 stars, this is important because the numbers, could refer to the nine stars of the constellation Leo that is right next to Virgo, plus the three wandering planets or stars moving into the region. Okay, now I'm going to do this right on the end and say what happens, what happens when this plays out according to according to the Bible. Let's just see what it says. I haven't asked it this yet. You can see the screen there. Let's see what it says. Here we go. It says, following the passage in Revelation 12, 1-2, 
about the woman clothed with the sun, etc. We know that already. Dragon appears. Number one, dragon appears. Revelation 12, 3-4. Another sign appears in heaven. A great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns with seven crowns on its head. The dragon tail sweeps in a third of the stars out of the sky. This is what's going to happen after this. This is what they're saying, right? Um, it flings them to earth. That's probably balls like uh, Nibiru, let's just say. The, I'm just guessing. The dragon stands in front of the woman who is about to give birth, waiting to devour her child the moment it's born. <laughs> that would mean pretty soon if this is real. Like, birth of the male child, Revelation 12.5. The woman gives birth to a male child who will rule all nations with an iron skep scepter. This child is immediately snatched up to God in his throne. Oh, these are the th possibilities. Okay. Woman's flight. Revelation 12, 6. The woman flees into the wilderness to place prepared for her by God where she will be taken care of for 1260 days. Number four. War in heaven. Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Michael and his angels fight against the dragon and its angels. The dragon identified as Satan is hurled to the earth and the angels with him. Number five, rejoicing in heaven. Revelation 12, 10, a loud voice in heaven proclaims the coming of God's kingdom and the authority of Christ. It declares woe to the earth and sea because of the devils come down with filled with fury. Number six, persecution of the woman. Revelation 12, 13 through 16. When the dragon realizes he has been hurled to the earth, he pursues the woman, but she is given wings of great eagle to fly to a place in the wilderness where she will be taken care of for a time. For, quote, a time, times, and a half of a time. Uh, often interpreted as three and a half years. The dragon tries to sweep the woman away with flood, but the earth helps the woman by swallowing the flood. And in the seven, it says, Dragons war on the woman offspring, Revelation 12, 17. Enraged at the woman, the dragon goes off to the way to wage war against the rest of her offspring and those who keep God's con commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Says the events described in Revelation 12 are filled with symbolism and have been interpreted in many ways through Christian history. Some interpretations view the woman as Israel, the child of Jesus, and the dragon as Satan or Rome. Rome. See that word? Other interpretations see the narrative as symbolic or broader spiritual truth. So you got to remember the Bible speaks in pictures. Not everything's literal. Most of it's not. It is. It's essential to approach the Book of Revelation. But what I'm saying, okay, of the apocalypse. Okay, is this related to the uh, what do you call it? Um, rapture. Rapture. Then seven years. If this were to play out. See, this computer right now, this AA doesn't know about the star. So it does not know. This is stopped in 2019. So it has no idea about current news where I'm talking. So it has no idea that this is really why I'm asking it. That's why I like sometimes playing with the Chad one. Uh, where to play out? Let's just see what it says. Question mark. The concept of the rapture of the subsequent tribulation period of seven years, while not definitely or not directly detailed in Revelation 12 is part of the es es <laughs> Gee, I can't say that today. I don't have my glasses on. Interpretation. Eschological, I think. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Particularly among certain evangelical and disproportionalist Christian groups. Okay. One, the rapture. According to this belief, before the tribulation begins, there will be an event known as the rapture where all true Christians are taken up to be with Jesus in heaven. The event is based on passages like 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17. Um, and it, it says, through the term rapture, does not appear in the Bible. Number two, the tribulation. After the rapture, it is believed that there will be a seven-year period known as the tribulation. During this time, those left behind on earth will experience a series of severe judgments from God. This period is all been divided into two three-and-a-half-year segments. With the second half particularly intense and often referred to as the Great Tribulation. This concept is primarily derived from Daniel 9, 24 through 27 in the book of Revelation. Revelation 
It says, Relation to Revelation 12. The events of Revelation 12, as mentioned, are highly symbolic, but some interpreters suggest that the woman's 1260 days, or three and a half years, is the in the wilderness represents the second half of tribulation. The great tribulation, the initial birth of the child and its being snatched up by God can be seen in the line of interpretation as representing the rapture or Christ's ascension and the dragon's subsequent wrath represents the events of the tribulation. Now, oh wait, wait, the, I'm going to say, before I forget, this thing's going to disappear in a few days. So that baby's going to disappear out of view. That's symbolism. See how that works? It's going around the sun after that. Just saying, like, I just see patterns in their words, like, in pictures they're saying. Next paragraph, it's essential to note that there are many interpretations of the end time events within Christianity. The rapture followed by seven year tribulation is just one of one view of among several. Other Christians, for example, believe in a post tribulation rapture where believers are. Okay, so that's all kinds of beliefs with this stuff. I just want to see the odds that this. Hang on, let me get to the picture. Hang on. That this timing of a of an asteroid coming out of Virgo. Hang on, where is it? Uh, standby, standby, standby. The odds that, and by the way, on the 17th, was it the 17th? It's coming out, it's now or two days ago. It just fell in this position where the sun is above it and the moon was directly below. It was a new, it's because they're coming out of the other constellations. Like, so it resets their thing. But then the odds that this mystery, or what do you call it, coincidental asteroid, is literally in her head at the same time and moving down the birth canal. As the note cards I just showed you said would happen. And then after that, some believe, like I just read, you start, like people may, if you see suddenly a bunch of people disappear or die or whatever, like, that would be a clue, but hopefully, you know, <laughs> you'd be in the, you'd be on that bus ticket out. And then I've read that if you're not into the story of Jesus, then there's uh, later when it all ends up, you get the scorecard. That's their belief. Like, I believe the cross means pluses and minuses. You add it up in your karma, but whatever, like. All I'm saying is the sky and the stars remind me of a clock wheel, like all those gears turning. So they're very precise and accurate and never change throughout time. So if the hidden knowledge, whether it's biblical because you believe in religion or it's ancient where you go 5,000 years before these religions started, they all were saying the same thing, except I never saw it as... <laughs> How interesting. And if you look around you, the, the earth. Hang on, I did say I was going to show you that. Let me just show you.